Now that we know all that we need to know about exponents with whole numbers, what about the negative exponents? It is pretty hard to imagine objects that have negative dimensions. In order to answer this question properly, we must remember that x raised to the negative n is equal to 1 over x raised to the n. And with this simple property, we can find the derivative of x raised to the negative exponent by simply recalling our division example and remembering that where f of x is equal to g of x over r of x, it is true that the derivative of f of x is equal to the derivative of g of x times r of x minus the derivative of r of x times g of x all over r of x times r of x. In this case, it would mean that the derivative of f of x is equal to 0 minus n times x raised to n minus 1 all over x raised to n times x raised to n, which is equal to negative n over x times x raised to n. This simplifies further down to the derivative of f of x being equal to negative n over x raised to n plus 1, which is equal to negative n times x raised to negative n minus 1, which leads us to conclude that what was true for positive integers is also true for negative integers. If number n is an integer, then we can say that in functions where f of x is equal to x raised to the power of n, the derivative is equal to n times x raised to the power of n minus 1. It is also possible for n to be a fraction of some sort, such as r over w. In this case, we will write f of x is equal to x raised to r over w. It would be pretty difficult to imagine a fractionally dimensional object, but we don't have to. In this case, the function f of x can be represented as f of x is equal to, in parentheses, x raised to the power of r, which is then raised to the power of 1 over w. This reminds us of the case where f of x was represented by a function of a function. For this reason, we can say that f of x is equal to g of b of x, where g of b of x is b of x raised to 1 over w, and b of x is equal to x raised to the power of r. The derivative f prime of x is equal to the product of g prime of b of x and b prime of x. The derivative of b of x is known to be b prime of x equal to r times x raised to the power of r minus 1. In order to find the derivative of g of b of x, which is equal to b of x raised to 1 over w, we must first remember that the inverse of g of b of x is g inverse of b of x, which is equal to b of x raised to the power of w. The derivative of the function b of x raised to the power of w is w times b of x raised to the power of w minus 1. The inverse function rule from a while back tells us that the derivative of f of x is actually equal to 1 over the derivative of f inverse of f of x. And in this case, that means the derivative of g of b of x is equal to 1 over, in parentheses, w times, in parentheses again, b of x raised to 1 over w, which is then raised to w minus 1, which is equal to 1 over, in parentheses, 
W times B of X raised to 1 minus 1 over W, which simplifies down further to the derivative of G of B of X being equal to 1 over W times B of X raised to 1 over W minus 1. Multiplying the derivative of G of B of X by the derivative of B of X, where B of X is equal to X raised to the power of R, we get the derivative of F of X being equal to, in parentheses, R over W times x raised to the power of r minus 1 times x raised to the power of r, which is then raised to 1 over w minus 1. We can simplify this further down to say that the derivative of f of x is equal to, in parentheses, r over w times x raised to r minus 1 minus r plus r over w. And this fractional case finally simplifies down to say that the derivative of f of x is equal to, in parentheses, r over w times x raised to r over w minus 1. With this proof, we can show that if n is an exponent, which is a whole number, positive or negative, or a fraction. It is true that if f of x is equal to x raised to the power of n, then the derivative of f of x is equal to n times x raised to the power of n minus 1.